What's going on, everybody? Yeah, back at it again. You know, putting out that daily therapy for you guys. You know, and I, and I realized that that's what this has turned into. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I'm able to help anyone that I've been able to reach out to that listens to my videos. You know, um, and I want you guys to know, you know, I, I put my all into this because I realized, you know, I was in that same place. I was in the same place. I may have been in the worst place. So I know the importance of, you know, getting that therapy, getting somebody to talk back to you, to, to talk with somebody or listen to that voice of reason. I know how important that is to, to have that voice of reason, you know, to be in that arena where, you know, you're free to, you know, just go through what you're going through to help purge what you've gone through, you know, and today's video is a reflection of that. This is a different kind of video I'm doing today because on this video, I'm actually going to have a guest. I'm going to have a guest that is going to speak and give a personal um, experience, you know, on what she dealt with dealing with this situation. And this, the, today's video, the topic is feeling sorry for the narcissist can be the worst mistake that you've ever made. It can be the worst mistake you've ever made. The narcissist starts the relationship out with something, something that they're using that they want to you to feel sorry for them. They want you to feel sorry for them. They want, and, and the reason that I'm, I'm learning that the reason that a narcissist wants you to feel sorry for them is because they know if you feel sorry for them, you always have an excuse. See, that's the excuse you give yourself for allowing that person to do what they do to you. And that's really all we need most of the time. You know, somebody giving us the excuse to allow them to go further, to keep on doing what they're doing, to, you know, whatever they're doing to us. That's the deal with us most of the time. You know, we're like, Okay, uh, well, I know that you're doing this. That's what we're saying to our, we're talking to ourselves like, well, you know what? Yeah, I know they, that the reason they act so crazy is because what they went through when they were young. See, that's why the narc always has one of those sad stories about how they grew up. Because they already know when I abuse you, You're still going to be there. You're going to still pay me. I, I heard of, it's a little Kim a verse. She did a verse on a song. I can't remember the name of this song, but I remember the verse. Woo! I remember the verse for years. From the first time I heard that, vo that verse, it was, she said, I tell this N word a lie. She said, I tell him a lie. Because he's full of empathy. So when I S-H-I-T on this N-word, he going to still pamper me. She's like, I'm telling him a lie to keep him full of empathy. So when I on this, he going to still pamper me. And that song and that saying is so true. It's so true. It's so true. It was her way of saying I'm going to dog you. I'm going to do something to you because it's the reaction that it's going to get out of you is going to be different than what you would expect. Mm -hmm. See, when you know somebody, or let me say it like this, when you don't know somebody and they run, walk up to you and do something disrespectful, it's a lot easier for you to respond to that person at just as disrespectfully as they, as they uh, gave that disrespect to you. 
But when it's somebody you know, you question the disrespect. Like, hold it. D did you just disrespect me like that? D nah, they, they didn't mean to do that. They didn't. No, nah, it's no way that you just destroyed our trust and did. No, it's no way you did that. So you're second guessing it. And a narcissist knows this. They know this. And that's why they, it's so easy for them to do it. It's so easy for them to do it because they've done it so many times. They know they're not going to get that same disrespect back from you because they already had that conversation with you and they've created a trust in the conversation because you, you ever notice when you're talking to them, you'll be talking to a narc and then they come with some disrespect from somewhere and you're just like, where did that come from? Like, what are you talking about? How did that start? And it's like, there you go with that stuff again, that disrespect. And a narcissist does that. See, they talk to you in a way to lead you in, to lead you to believe that this is going to be a respectful conversation. It's going to, you know, I'm just gaining your trust. And then, boom, I'm going to snatch the rug right from under you. And then before you know it, you're having an argument and you're wondering what is going How did that happen? So. You know, like I said about the topic today, you know, today, feeling sorry for the narc ultimately be the worst mistake you ever made. That's the reason that you take them back so much. You feel sorry for them. They know you feel sorry for them. They know that. They know they don't deserve another chance. They know that they do not deserve another chance with you. They have shown you everything they need to show you. And they just don't, they're not worthy of another opportunity in your life. But they know you're going to give them an opportunity. They know you're going to give them an opportunity because you're an empath. That's the kind of person you are. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Give them another chance. They know you want to believe that they are not as evil as, as they've shown you they are. They know we want to believe that. They know that no matter what they do, we still want to believe that. No, nah, there's no way this person really is this, this bad off. It's no way. It's no way. Yes, there is a way. We continue to let them back, let them back. They continue to show us and show us. I'm not good for you. I'm going to keep disrespecting you. Every time you let me back, it's going to be the same thing. The narcissist will let you know. The narcissist will let you know and will show you time and time again that no matter what, no matter what, no matter what is going on, they're going to disrespect you. They're going to undermine you. They're going to under, you can forgive them. You can allow them, but you feeling sorry for that narcissist. When you feel sorry for that narcissist, people, that's when they take advantage. That's all they're trying to, they just want you to feel sorry for them. They'll tell you sometimes, you know, I'm sick. You know that I have problems. You know how I grow up. You grew, I grew up. You knew what, what happened to me as a teenager, you know, and they got an excuse for the ill behavior. And the thing about it is, it, if the longer you let that go on, the worse it gets. They will get to the place and get to the point where, you know, after you have discarded them, you're tired of dealing with them and you won't cut them off. That's how they're going to get back because you feel sorry for them. The thing that you must know more than anything is that somebody that cares about you. I want y'all to hear me good on this. Somebody that cares about you, they truly care about you. You're not going to get to that point. You're not going to get to that point of no return. People who are good people don't allow. They don't allow. They don't allow themselves to take anyone to the point of no return. Good people never do this. Never. I use the blanket statement. Good people never do that. 
Good people never take their relationships to the point of no return. Never. Because they value their relationships. No matter how heated things get and whatever happens, they're not going to take it to the point of no return. That's not what good people do. Narcissists are going to take your relationship to the point of no return every opportunity they get. And they don't care what it does. They don't care what it means. That's just who they are. That's who they are by nature. And if you find yourself giving that narc another chance, another chance and another chance, literally, you're going to be in a situation where you're like, hey, you're always why did I take them back? And then you're beating up on yourself again. Why did I take them back? Why did I do that? Why am I doing this? I must be crazy. I'm, you're calling yourself crazy now. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start thinking when you deal with somebody like that. Because that's not, they're not good people. They're not good people. And you know that they're not. You feel sorry for them, but they've worked hard to get themselves in the wedge that they have wedged themselves into every time. A narcissist works hard to get themselves where they are in life. This shouldn't, their, their life didn't just happen to them today. No, wherever they are, and that's, that's, that rule applies to all of us. Wherever you are in life, you worked hard to get there. Mm -hmm. Because you may have been blessed with a lot of things, but... Sometimes we let that, that blessings get overshadowed with feeling sorry for this narc. And we're, bl we're blocking our own blessings because we won't cut that narc off. Yeah, you know, and, you know, you feel sorry for the narc because they will wedge themselves in some very bad situations. And you still the ones feeling sorry for them. You're still the one that's thinking, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take you back and we're going to work this out. And I knew we was going to, I knew we somehow we would pull this back together. The narc is like, got you, got you again. Wow. It's too easy. This is too easy getting you, getting over on you. And then don't let them come back and, and say, I just want my family back and blah. Man, that's the, that line is so played out. All I'm saying at this point, y'all, is if your narc calls you back talking about or trying to get back with you, I want my family back. That is the tiredest lie in the book. That's your proof that they lie. Because if they wanted their family, they would. See, somebody who loved, values family would never allow that. They would never allow themselves to get to that place the same way you would not. Okay? I'm telling you that... Feeling sorry for this narcissist will destroy you. It will destroy your whole situation. Now, today I'm doing something a little different on this video. I'm actually going to have someone else do some commentary and give a, just give a few moments of, you know, what their life was like when they were dealing with the narc. Because they had a situation, you know, where, you know, they she had a situation where she felt sorry for the narcissist, too. You know, and I'm saying I, I've told you my story. I mean, many times I'm, I'm giving you different examples of what it's like to what happens when you feel sorry for them. What it pulls you back into. OK, now I just want you to hear it from someone who actually has gone through all of that and, you know, given that narc many chances and it still doesn't pay off because no matter what, given that feeling sorry for them, it's going to have you, in, it's going to have you ended up just like them. All right. You want to just give a couple of seconds or just give a minute or two of what you, uh, your experience was. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hey, Harriet. Um, after going no contact for almost a year, I changed my number, moved. Um, I got my kids.
kids to change their numbers so they wouldn't be able to contact them. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I had, well, about a month ago now, I had um, bumped into him. Okay. When I first saw him, I kind of got nervous because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if they were still angry because they haven't found me or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, they were really nice. They were like, the first thing they said was, oh, my God, you look so good. And I'm like, okay, thank you. So long story short, they were, the first, the second thing he was like, um, I'm so sorry for everything or anything that I've done to you. I mean, like pouring their heart out. Mm-hmm. And as I looked at him, I'm like, okay, he looks bad. He didn't have a haircut. He had the same clothes, <laughs> same shoes that I had bought. His car was not in good standards. He had stuff taped up and everything. So I'm looking like, wow. I felt so sorry. Hey, could you I know? ask a quick question, though? What, uh-huh. what, what was the social media situation saying, though, you know, before that moment, you know? What you mean? Like, you know, what, what, did you see him on social media or notice anything on social media? Like, he may have tried to do something or uh, oh. be involved with something to make himself look big or to oh look like he's God. happy? It's, it's, well, I, I block all the social media. So any social media that I see of him, it's somebody sending these things to me and they, they're clowning him. You know, stuff mm-hmm. like um, trying to act like he care about homeless people, giving them shirts and stuff. Or, I mean, just different things. But the, the, the sorry part is a narcissist will really make you feel sorry for them. You have to be strong and you have to understand what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So the, that day that I met him, that I saw him again, he had, he had tears and everything. He had tears. He's pouring the tears on. <laughs> yes, he even he even said some crazy stuff about let's go somewhere and have sex. I was like, what? Right, right on the spot. This, you know, yes. I know we broke up. And how long had y'all been broke up? Almost a year. Hey, let's just get it on. Come on, let's just go somewhere yes. and get it on, please. Yes. So I'm like, what? And I was like, oh my god. So I felt so bad where I was about to like, like give him a couple of hundred dollars. Like, look, go get your coffee, go do some <laughs> stuff. But Ooh. I was like, you know what? Dang. So as I, he he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't move away from my car. So he kind of like was grabbing on me. So I said, okay, he had not changed because he's still aggressive. He's still grabbing on me. He grabbing on my clothes and stuff. So I said, listen, I have to go. So he was like, you still wanted to stay like this? And I was like, yes. But here you are on social media with a female pretending that that's who you with. And, you know, but, you know, narcissists are homosexuals, too. They have to, that's their supply. So they, wherever they at, wherever they lay their head, they have to fake future with. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he put so he had put something out on social media anyway, and you're saying that you found out about that through other people that know. Other people. Right, right. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I got I you. I will not. I will not allow. <laughs> but him hold to it, hold it. Now, th- this video that I'm doing right now is about people who have felt when you feel sorry for them, how it can come I back did. to haunt you. I did. It felt sorry. I felt sorry. It bothered me for days. Mm -hmm. It bothered me for days. All the words that he was saying to me. Everything that sounded so sincere. Like, he had tears in his eyes. He was looking straight in my eyes and telling me how he's messed up. And he had a flying monkey with him, as always, um, uh, in the background. Yes, he misses you. He loves you. He talks about you all the time. He's not right without you. Everything, I felt bad and i felt those emotions again after all that time mm, for, wow. for a couple of days so i don't know what happened after a couple of days i woke up and was like oh no no way i would never go back to that and i thought about everything else and i'm like no and i started feeling like i was feeling in the beginning again like hey just no nah, it's not even so while well, you know at that point did you feel like you even wanted to be bothered again at what time? When I saw I mean, him? after you saw him. After I saw him, the crazy.
crazy part how that spirit works it bothers you it taunts you it makes you feel bad it makes you feel like you did something wrong or mm -hmm. they're not that or they're not that bad mm, you know right <laughs> because yeah, a little bit of time yeah. has gone by so you can feel sorry for this person again because yeah. they seem sincere sorry. they seem sincere and, 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 and because you're not angry about the situation anymore, it almost draws you back in. Yes, but I had to remember why I discarded him. I discarded my narc. Mm -hmm. And I had to go back to that. No, I was drained. I was lied to. I was abused. I was I mean, everything. I took care of him. Everything. So, you know, I had to go back to that, but I really felt sorry standing there talking to him. I didn't even want to leave. I didn't want to leave him. Mm. But I said, I got to get in the car and I have to go. And he was like, no, talk some more. Like he was asking for my number. He pulled his phone out. I said, no, I got to go. And then after that, he had other people reaching out to me mm. on Messenger. Ooh, boy. So it just it just never stops. You see it's them and it's they just stop. they got to keep it going. Now that I saw you, I got to yeah. figure out how to get back to you and get back in. So mm -hmm. does no contact working for you? How I'm sorry. Does it work for you? How it is it working work. for you? It does work because since I've discarded him, my life got better. Everything got better. Mm. And, and did he get a chance to see all that when he saw you? Yes. <laughs> he saw that I have a new, I have a new um, vehicle. He was like, this you? I'm like, yeah. You know, and he, the first thing when he saw me, you look good. Wow, you look good. <laughs> you know? And, and, and he I wasn't heard. looking so good. No. Mm. No. No. Hey, well, hey, guys, listen. Hey, I want to thank you for just helping some people out with that you know like i said i'm doing something a little different now and i want to put you know some people who have actually dealt with this out you know to, to just help talk to the up uh, talk to the people about what their experience was like because i want to make this real for everybody i want to make it a reality for everybody that you know, we've gone through this. This is real. And every situation, although we might be a little different, everybody's going through the same thing. Hey, guys, that's my video. I want to thank everybody who has supported the channel. I appreciate you all. I want you to like, comment, share, subscribe. Most of all, I want you to comment. Most of all, I want you to comment, 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 comment. Your comments help people through this. Okay, if you need to talk to me, you can reach out to me on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. It's the it's called Narcissist Anonymous 101, the Empath Tribe. You can inbox me on my Facebook page. I will send you a copy of my calendar if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can also in, uh, inbox me on Instagram if you're on there. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.